It's really easy when you're inside the squad with the heat blaring on you, looking out the window at a beautiful snowy scene like this, and to take for granted the fact that you're inside shelter with heat. But you take a step outside and start thinking about having to spend a couple hours out in this, especially in an area like this where there's no shelter and the cold is no joke. Drop the car now! Put your hands up here on the car. Up on the car. No, don't put them in your pockets. Hands up on the car. There you go. Right there. All right, when we're talking about cold weather gear for law enforcement, one of the first things people think about is coats or jackets and their liners and getting the very warmest coat humanly possible. But that's not the whole story. In reality, where we want to start with cold weather gear for law enforcement is a very brief discussion about how cold it is. So today we're going to look at my gear for when it's about negative 10, for when it is below zero Fahrenheit outside. Uh, the coat and the jacket, of course, are the first line of defense with stuff after you're on the road, but of course it starts way, way before you're on the road when you want to talk about cold weather gear. The first and most important thing is to make sure you have a good liner shirt, something of a synthetic fabric that's going to wick moisture away from your body. You don't, in the winter time, want to be wearing, actually any time, but definitely in the winter time, you don't want to be wearing cotton undershirts, cotton underwear that are going to hold moisture next to your skin because it's going to make it a lot easier for you to get cold. If you know it's going to be negative 10 degrees outside, you're going to need long johns after that, right? Pretty simple. Uh, these are a fairly thin pair of long johns, shirts and pants. You can see there it's a uniform material, right? That's what I would wear if I was just going out on patrol. I knew that there was a good chance I was going to be spending the most of the day in the car because you never know when you're going to be spending your day in the car and when you might be spending your day in a hospital or some other environment where it's warm. And these will keep you warm when you're outside but won't overheat the living crap out of you when you're inside, when you're stuck in the station or stuck in the hospital or somewhere else on inside duties. If we step up from there, these are like the real talk long johns, right? You can see these have kind of a mesh fabric. They're a lot thicker. They're a lot more expensive. These, I think, are the Cabela's Polar Tech Long Johns, right? This is what I'll wear if I know I'm getting called out. I'm going to be outside for a long time, if I have time to prepare for this stuff. Uh, I bought these when I was on SWAT because we were constantly outside in negative 5, negative 10 degree weather sitting in a backyard or in the woods or you know in an industrial plant somewhere and this is the type of thing that's going to keep you warm long term when you're out on the street but if it was down to negative 20 negative 30 or if we knew snowmageddon was going to come again i had a circumstance a couple of years ago where we knew in advance we were going to get 20 inches of snow in a 24-hour period we were all going to be held there and that we were going to be pushing cars out of the street and doing outdoor activities. I wore these that day. These are expensive, but they're well worth it when you're out there freezing your butt off. Another thing that long johns do for you that people don't think about is that if you have to get out of the car in a hurry and you forget your coat behind, you've at least got some level of thermal protection against the cold. So when you're out running after somebody and you didn't have time to throw your coat back on because you were all toasty warm in the car with your coat off, driving around listening to tunes, you at least have something on that's going to keep you from going hypothermic if you should find yourself in the middle of the woods chasing some idiots. Of course, on top of those, you're going to want good uniform clothing. Uh, it's real easy to buy polyester pants, the cheapest polyester pants you can get, and then uh, go on the road, and for most of the year, most of the season, that's going to be all right, and you save yourself a bunch of money. But in the wintertime, you're going to want something thick, made by a good company. I prefer Blower or 511 right now. I use Blower for all my stuff. They seem to be a little more color fast. I know you can't tell if I look at these pants, but these pants are three years old. Three-year-old dark blue navy pants. There's very other brands out there that are going to get me this level of color fastness in a blue pant. Uh, these, I think, are the poly rayons. They've been pretty color fast for me. 
And because of the thickness of the material that's used on a good pair of pants, I think these are about $90, $95, these add a layer of insulative protection in the wintertime, especially when you combine them with a good pair of underdrawers. And next, before we ever even get to coats, our boots. Now, if you know it's gonna be cold outside and you know you're gonna be outside for several hours, you probably want 1,000 gram Thinsulate boots. These are 600 gram Thinsulate boots with Gore-Tex liners. These are Bates Durashocks, I think. Yep, Bates Durashocks. They're a pretty heavy boot, but they're also pretty heavy duty and they're fairly warm. And because they're 600 gram Thinsulate boots, I can wear them on normal patrol without boiling my feet up. And if I get stuck in a hospital or inside the station or something like that when I'm expecting to be outside, I am not gonna boil too much but these have worked out really well for me. If I know it's gonna be below zero out, these are the boots that I wear to work. I have a pair of Danner uh, Torrent GTXs that I wear normally for three seasons. This is my fourth season boot in the Chicagoland area. It gets very, very cold here sometimes. And so a good pair of boots on your feet will keep you from getting frostbite. And anybody who's had frostbite knows how important it is to make sure your feet are protected. From there, we're finally getting up to where the coat or jacket and jacket liner actually come into play. Good coats cost good money. Uh, it's an unfortunate fact of life, and especially in police work, good coats are gonna cost you a whole lot of money. Uh, this is a Blower brand coat that is Gore-Tex lined. It's a uh, Ike length, which means it sits above my duty belt, so I don't have to worry about these little snap things along the outside and snapping it around my gun or any of that to keep my weapon available. I wear an Ike length, length coat and I have a liner that I can zip into the inside of the coat. See how there's a, a zipper on here and a zipper on the liner. So most of the time what I wear is just the shell of the coat. It's just a Gore-Tex hard shell on top of my uniform and on top of my vest and on top of the under drawers and that's more than enough for me. And if I know I'm going to be outside for a long period of time, let's say we get a barricaded gunman or I know I'm going into the woods, if I know I'm going to set perimeter or containment on a set of woods or a house, I'll throw the liner into the coat which snaps into the sleeves and zips into the inside of the coat and gives me another layer of insulative protection. Now, so that I don't lose all the cold weather stuff I need and so I have one thing that I can grab and pull out of the car with me when I know I'm getting out and I know I'm gonna need extra protection from the cold. I keep all of my ancillary cold weather gear that I use on a daily basis in the coat itself, in the pockets of the coat. In my right hand pocket, I got a pair of these neoprene gloves. Uh, they're kind of like wearing a windbreaker on your hands. They're maybe 20 minute gloves if it's below zero outside, after about 20 minutes, 10, 15, 20 minutes, you're gonna start feeling the tips of your fingers get numb. So they buy you a little bit of time when you're gonna be out in the cold long-term, but they're not a long-term solution to the problem. If you're gonna be outdoors for a long period of time, you're gonna need heavier, thicker gloves, and we're gonna look at those in a minute. But for patrol, for most of my purposes, this is what I keep on me, and that's why I keep them in the jacket. On the other external pocket, I keep a balaclava. And what you can do with a balaclava here is you can put it around your neck and you put your whole head through the hole of the balaclava and then when you need more protection, you can pull it up over the top of the head, your head, protecting your ears and your face. It's a, it's a real effective way to cover your face without having to carry another thing around because I can put this on at the beginning of the day and just wear it if I know I'm gonna be out in the cold a lot. And here I also have a flashlight, not related to the cold, but this is my Nikkor SRT7. And I've been carrying this in the pocket of my jacket because if you've seen my duty belt video, there's gonna be a little link up in the corner for it. Uh, you know that on my vest, I carry my flashlight, and it's over on my left-hand side on my chest. So if I'm wearing my coat, it's covering it up, and I'd like to have another flashlight where I can get to it and where I'm used to reaching for a light. So I keep this up front in my pocket. And on the inside, I carry an extra hat. And I say an extra hat because ordinarily, I wear 
this hat, and this hat stays on my vest cover. It's just a black hat that says police. This is our uniform hat where I'm at. And I can put this in the epaulette in my vest, and I always have that on me all the time, whether I have the coat or not. Because <laughs> when it's cold out, what you really need, especially if you get a dome like me, is a hat. If I know it's gonna be super, super cold, I can take this hat off, put this one on, throw this back over the top, or I'll put this hat on, throw, pull the balaclava over the top, and then put this over the top of all of it, kind of seal my head in. But this is a Columbia hat, it's got this metal mesh liner, I forget what this stuff's called. All of this is gonna be down in links in the description if you wanna look them up and see more specifications for it. But this thing is really, really good as a layer. Think of it as like the under drawers of your head, right? Like the long underwear for your head. So what I'll have on if I know it's gonna be negative 10 degrees outside and I'm going out on patrol is a good set of underwear and then long johns over the top of it, then my uniform. Uh, for boots, I actually wear Cool Max socks because they wick the moisture away from my feet. And then over the top, I'll put my heavy set of boots. Then my belt, then my vest, which <laughs> creates some insulative factors all on its own. And then I'll put the liner in my jacket and the balaclava around my neck. And I know that in a moment's notice, all I need to do is be able to grab my coat and run out of the car and I'm gonna be pretty good. Now, what if I'm gonna be out for a couple hours, you ask? Well, that's when an entirely different bag comes into play. If I know it's gonna be negative 10 out, I throw this into the trunk of my car. It wasn't on my trunk bag video because it doesn't stay in there all the time. Right, this is only when I know it's gonna be super, 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 super cold out or I know I'm gonna be spending a large portion of my time outdoors. I get called out for a detail in the middle of winter where I know I'm gonna be outside. I packed this bag for the things that I'm most likely to need being at the top. So right at the very top of the bag without having to unclip the side straps or anything is my gloves. These are a pair of mittens, as you can see, that you can close up on your hands. So if you're gonna be somewhere just directing traffic for two and a half hours, you can have mittens on. If you're in a circumstance where you know the probability that you're gonna get into a gunfight is extraordinarily low, or you're sitting on a perimeter and you can put one hand in the mitten and have the other one out so you can get to your trigger finger. One thing I worked out with the mittens though is that I can put my normal gloves on and I don't ever have to take these off, right? So I always have some protection from the cold weather. I can put these mittens on with my normal gloves on and in place, right? So with my normal gloves that I wear on patrol, I can still use all of my equipment. I can still reach the trigger on my gun. I can still operate my taser. I can still use OC spray. I can still push the button on the baton. And so my ends of my fingers still have all that protection, but then if I need it, I can close the mitten up and get warm. And if I really need it, we've seen a bunch of other videos, I can pop a hot hands into the back of this. I also keep hot hands in my coat. And that keeps my hands warm enough where it's not gonna be an issue. Now when it gets down to negative 10, you're gonna be outside for a long period of time. I don't know about everybody's work, but where I'm at, eh, sometimes uniformity starts going by the wayside when you've got a choice between people being uniform and people being frostbitten. I've been looking for a long time for a pair of these mittens in black and so far, I have come to no avail. The inside of the rest of the bag is kind of long-term stuff. If we get uh, a barricade situation where I know I'm gonna be outside for a very long period of time, one thing that's important that I keep with me, I have my fleece. I can take this, it's just a polar fleece jacket, and I can throw this between my uniform and my vest and my coat and the coat liner for an extra layer of protection, a little more warmth if I feel like I might need it. And underneath there is a big old cheap wool emergency blanket. Something a lot of people don't think about if you're gonna be outside very, very long periods of time is that heat will actually radiate out of your foot 
into the concrete underneath, even if you're wearing very, very nice boots. So if for nothing else, it's nice to be able to quadruple this blanket up and stand on it or be able to open it up and sit on it if you're gonna be sitting somewhere on concrete for a long period of time so that the heat in your butt or the heat in your feet doesn't soak down into the concrete or metal that you're sitting or standing on. And also as an emergency measure, if you're looking for someone in the woods, we once had a guy that ran through the woods and into a creek and fell into the creek. And now we're half a mile into the woods with him with a guy that soaked and God only knows how quickly the ambulance is gonna be be able to get there. So we got him out, out of the creek, put him into a car, and it was nice to have this blanket there to be able to throw upon him to keep him a little warmer while we were cranking up the heat in the car. But uh, the great thing about these is that they're pretty cheap. I think I only paid $10 for this at the Army Surplus store, and it works fairly well. So after I wrapped it around the bad guy and warmed him up, and they were like, oh, do you want your blanket back? No, that's cool. Take it to the hospital. I'll buy a new one. In the top of the bag is a camouflage poncho and a white bed sheet for making shelter and camouflaging said shelter should that become necessary and some paracord for the same purpose and a bunch of granola bars which I probably need to replace because they're a little out of date. So that is the cold weather gear that I keep with me when I'm out on patrol or that I wear when I'm out on patrol. I'm not saying that this is obviously the perfect stuff for everybody in the environments everybody's in. I'm sure down in Texas or in Florida, you wouldn't need all this stuff. And I'm sure in Canada, you'd probably need a whole, whole buttload more. But hopefully it gives people a place to start. I know a lot of new guys get on the job and they'll buy a coat and they'll buy a pair of duty gloves and they'll buy their normal boots and they'll be on day shift or afternoon in the winter and then they'll get transferred to an FTO that's on midnights and as we all know midnights psh, the temperature starts plummeting you don't have that solar effect of the sun warming your skin a little bit and you have the propensity to be stuck outside a whole lot longer if you get a bad motor vehicle collision in the middle of the night it's harder to call people off for overtime it's harder to pull people out of the station to come help out with stuff so hopefully this gives people a place to start if I had to buy, suggest to you as someone that's new to buy one item to prepare yourself better for the winter other than a jacket, I would say it is a hat. This hat, or a hat very much like it. A thin, insultive hat that you can put below whatever your uniform hat is because heat is going to dissipate out the top of your head more than it is anywhere else. You're gonna very quickly find that if you put a hat on and then your uniform hat over the top, it's gonna to keep you a lot warmer than just your uniform hat is, no matter how good that uniform hat is out there. From there, I would go to boots, get yourself a good pair of winter boots and gloves, and then add on from there. And a lot of this stuff gets to the point where maybe you'd only use this blanket you know, once or twice a year, but having it in the trunk of the car costs you nothing because the car's carrying it. So feel free to steal any of these ideas. And if you have other ideas of ways to stay warm, trust me, I am always open for those. Throw them down in the comments section below. Till next week, you guys stay safe, take care of each other, and stay warm. I'd like to thank all the Patreon supporters and especially the shift supervisor level Patreon supporters that we have listed here. Your contributions are what allows free field training to continue on and become better. Thank you.